Hi, Steve Adubato here at the Tisch WNET studio in uh, Lincoln Center. It is uh, our honor to welcome Allison Blaze, who is the Chief Operating Officer, the National September 11th Memorial and Museum, and the co-author of A Place of Remembrance. Good to have you with us, Allison. Thank you so much for having me. Um, we were talking right before we got on the air. We had your CEO, yeah. Joe Daniels, mm -hmm. on a couple of years ago, right in this studio. Um, for folks who have not been to your place, describe it. It's an extraordinary place. So it is eight acres of the 16-acre World Trade Center site. Uh, the memorial itself is two pools that sit right within the footprints of the Twin Towers. Uh, they're about an acre in size, waterfalls that descend about 30 feet, and then go into a void that looks like it goes on for eternity. And surrounding the pools are the names of all 2,983 victims, uh, arranged in a way that's unique from any other memorial in existence because they're with people who they knew and loved. And we went through a really extraordinary process with all of the victims next of kin to figure out a way that would make that the most meaningful arrangement that it could be. And then the museum sits between the pools. There's a sort of entry pavilion that you go into. Uh, and then you, you actually go down below the memorial. And the museum itself is at the archaeological heart of the World Trade Center. So it's right there at bedrock of the site. You see the sawed off box beam columns that made up the outline of the Twin Towers. You see the slurry wall that held back the Hudson River during the attacks. And you see all of these authentic remnants of what was there. And then the museum exhibits exist within that archaeological site. How many people have been to the site? We've had 23 million people to the memorial since we opened in September 2011. 23 million. 23 million. And they've come from all over the world, 175 different nations, every state. And it's interesting. Um, I, I was asking you about this. So I'm going to talk about this on the air. I was talking about how the ages of our kids. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Our, two of our younger boys are 11 and 13, and you talked about age appropriate. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Yeah, it's really important to us as an institution that we provide a way into the 9-11 story for parents, for teachers who have a really hard time and are, are scared to talk about something that's a really difficult topic with children. Uh, so we have all sorts of ways into the story. We have school and family programs that are in the museum itself in our classrooms. On weekends, our family programs are tailored to whatever age parents bring in. So if, for example, I was saying for your daughter, five years old, coming in, there would be something for her. We have these amazing educators who figure out what is the right thing for that particular family. So they might pull out uh, sample FDNY badges and have her paint a badge and talk about what it means to be a hero, who firefighters are, read a children's book about firefighters. Mm. Uh, but there's always a way into the story, no matter what the age, no matter what the age is. This book. Yes. A Place of Remembrance. Official book of the National September 11th Memorial. Talk about it. It was uh, an incredible experience to write this book. I wrote it with a colleague of mine, Lynn Rasick, uh, and it takes you through 9-11 and then all the way through the design, the building of the memorial, and now in the new edition, we added a chapter to talk about building the museum as well. Uh, and for us, uh, Lynn was on the project from the very beginning, just like I was. She was actually there on the day of 9-11 as uh, uh, Mayor Giuliani's press secretary. Um, so we worked on it as we were working to build the memorial and open it. Uh, and we wanted to make sure that it was a really open and honest account of what happened all along the way to get there. So it, it talks about the successes, certainly, but it also talks about all of the different debates and setbacks and the really emotional discussions that were at the heart of building this, uh, which, of course, they would be with so many it? people. Uh, extraordinarily hard and challenging, uh, although I will say all the way through, no matter how challenging it got, this is a job that is just so rewarding, no matter what challenges you're going through, no matter how emotional they get. Uh, because it was all about resilience and recovery. So no matter what we decided to do as we move forward, we were moving forward to do something at the site that would show hope and healing, that would show that we can overcome, that we are resilient people and we can rebuild. You know, um, we're doing this program at the end of 2015. We're moving yeah. into um, we're getting closer to the 15th anniversary of this program we've seen before and after. Um, what has happened in Paris is just yeah. devastating on so many levels. 
Does it make what is happening at the Memorial and Museum even more profound? I think so. I think I have so many things happening in the world today just underscore the necessity of this museum and make it an even more powerful place, especially when you look at our uh, public programming that's always addressing the current issues that are unfolding mm -hmm. in this world post 9-11. Um, you talked about Paris. We just, uh, last week, uh, earlier this week, we had a, a commemoration ceremony, and we had folks from all over the city come over. We had uh, the former ambassador to France, Craig Stapleton, who serves on our board of directors, came, and the French consul general came, mm. spoke about how after 9-11 in Paris, everybody was saying, we're all New Yorkers, we're all Americans. So for them to see at this very site where 9-11 happened, people coming together and saying, we're standing with you, Paris, I think was a really extraordinary way of saying that we're, we're all in this together. Uh, and for them to see a glimmer of hope of what can happen, that you can rebuild and you can recover. You know, as people are, um, and again, it's interesting when you do a program like this because we repeat yeah. their encore presentations. And yeah. so you never know what's going to be happening. And you always hope and pray. And, that nothing does happen, but right. you don't know. Um, my question goes to the fear that people are experiencing right. and what you do every day with your colleagues. Mm -hmm. Do you think people want to try to, in some ways, because they're so afraid, forget 9-11? I think there is an aspect of that, although I will say there are a lot of New Yorkers I've spoken to who say that that's part of the reason that they, they hesitated to come down to see the Memorial and Museum, that they, they felt the, that it would be too much bringing back those fears or, or too, too steeped in the day itself and the tragedy of it. And they're always surprised when they come downtown and they see the Memorial and the Museum that they leave with this sense of hope and that hope. it's an uplifting experience. because. If you think about it, what happened on 9-11, it, it was this horrendous day where these 19 hijackers took the lives of so many people. But at the same time, there are thousands of stories of people coming together, people who were helping one another, all of the first responders who ran up in the buildings and saved tens of thousands of lives, and also just the civilians who did the same thing. Uh, and then the whole aftermath of the attacks, everybody coming through the nine-month recovery period, the guys who work down there day in and day out under unimaginable conditions, mm. all of those stories are, are inspiring. They're all hopeful and uplifting. They're all about unity and people coming together and showing the best of humanity. Before I let you go, what has this job, what has this experience done for you and to you? It, uh, it's so hard to describe. It's been, it's been the privilege of a lifetime. Uh, it's really, it's nothing I ever would have thought that I would have been a part of. And the fact that I've been fortunate enough to play a tiny role in what's happened downtown is just extraordinary. It's been amazing to be part of. I've met so many gracious people who've led us into their lives, told us their stories, and allowed us to make that part of this historical museum. And why should people come down to the museum? I think you just have to, you have to understand what happened on that day and you have to remember what came out of it and that it was the best of humanity responding in the worst conditions. Allison Blaze, Chief Operating Officer, the National September 11th Memorial and Museum and co-author of A Place of Remembrance. I wanna thank you thank for being you so here much. with us and um, wish you nothing but the best in down lower Manhattan, keep doing what you're doing. Thank you, we okay. appreciate it. Stay with us from the uh, Tish WNET studio here in uh, Midtown. We'll be right back after this. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. This special edition of One on One with Steve Adubato is brought to you from the Tish WNET studios at Lincoln Center. Funding has been provided by Virtua, MagnaCare, TD Bank, Berkeley College, New Jersey Resources, Johnson & Johnson, and by Kessler Foundation. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area.